So let's apply what we've learned about hypothesis testing for the mean to a problem where a lot of the heavy calculations portions has been done for us by using a computer output. So we have the American Medical Board conducted a study in 2004 and found that the average age for the onset of anorexia nervosa for women was 15. A researcher decides to test these results and randomly samples a number of women admitted to all Toronto area hospitals under the diagnosis of anorexia nervosa. The hypothesis test output from Minitab is below, Minitab being one of the programs we use. So use these results to answer the questions. All right, and you can see I've already kind of circled and highlighted some things, but we'll, we'll run through them. So what parameter is being tested? You can see that it's mu, M-U. They write it right there. Minitab actually writes it out in words rather than having a symbol. So you have to know that that symbol is mu, which is this one over here on the left. Now what type of test did the research perform? Well, it's left tailed because you can see mu equals 15, that's the null, versus and then less than 15, which means it's a left tailed test. It also means that the symbols for your hypotheses are right down here. Mu equals 15 is your null hypothesis. Mu less than 15 is your alternative hypothesis. By the way, just notice you have to have a colon in here. Don't write an equal sign. So it's H1, that's the alternative, colon, and then it's mu is less than 15. All right, then in words, what we're saying is it is assumed that the average age for the onset of anorexia in women is 15. So that's the average age we assume to be true. The claim is that the average age for the onset of anorexia in women is before 15. See the before? And then we're going to try to prove it. All right, so what were the degrees of freedom? Let's see. Now, it's a little bit strange, but Minitab actually uses the capital letter N, but it doesn't really mean it. It's really the lowercase n. This, this n right here is your sample size. Since it's your sample size, it's 20, your degrees of freedom then is 19, because remember, degrees of freedom is n minus 1, which is 20 minus 1, which is 19. All right, now the standard error for the average age of the women sampled. Standard error for the average. That's the standard error for the mean, for x bar. So let's take the standard error. That's right here. That's 0.338. There, and I just boxed that in red so you could see. It's right up here. It's standard error of the mean. So that's SE of your x bar. And by the way, the mean is your x bar right there. Okay, so now what's the standard deviation? If that's the standard error, remember that we learned in section 8.1 that the standard error is equal to sigma sub x bar. Now, technically, that's equal to sigma over the square root of n, but for our purposes, we're going to say s over the square root of n because we don't really know what sigma is. So it's approximation, and we can argue about how good of approximation it is in some other course, but for our purposes, that's what we'll say. Okay, so if that's the case, then we know that 0 0.338 is roughly equal to s over the square root of n. And the square root of n, we already said n was 20. So to find what s is, you just multiply both sides by the square root of 20. You do it to the right-hand side in order to make it so that it divides away to 1. Okay, let me make this bigger. And then, of course, we'll do it to the other side as well. We'll have a dot here to show multiplication, and we'll multiply by 20. Now, these are going to cancel. The square root of 20 and square root of 20 over here are going to disappear. Then you'll have 0.338 times the square root of 20, which we'll find with our calculator. 0 0.338 times the square root of 20. 1.5116 or so. So let me write that in. And again, technically, this is an S for us because we don't know sigma. Um, we could debate whether or not we want to use sigma or S, but because this is from a sample, we're going to say that it's S. Mu and sigma are both unknown for this data set. All right, now that we know the standard deviation, let's find the test statistic and the p-value. So the test statistic I circled in orange and the p-value I circled in green right here. And you can see them right in the output right here. 
tau statistic is t0, so that's the letter t. So when you see the t in that problem right there at negative 2.22, that's your t0. Your p-value is the capital P at the end. So that's your p-value. Okay. So those two numbers are figured out. Now that you know that, use that to perform step four of the p-value method. Well, let me bring up the inferential statistics sheet here. So you're doing step four of the p-value. So you're picking one of these three graphs over here on the right. Since you're doing a left tail test, it's the one in the middle that you're interested in. So you're going to draw this picture. You're going to put an arrow and label your p-value. And your test statistic, t0, is that vertical bar right there. So let me grab the notes. There it is. So I've got this bar right here at negative 2.22. And the test statistic is that value, t0. Then your p-value is the area in that tail, that gray shaded area. There, just to make it a little bit clearer, that vertical black bar right there, that's 2 .2, negative 2.22. Then the p-value was, oh, 0 0.020. That's what we had, 0, 020. The computer gave me more decimal places than I needed right there. All right, so that's it. That's all there is to drawing that picture. So you just draw it, put down your test, put down your p-value, label everything appropriately. All right, now if the researchers set alpha to be 0.05, would those results be statistically significant? Sorry, statistically significant. There we go. And the answer is yes. Remember that rejection of the null is what is significant, quote unquote. So if you remember that, then because your p-value, which is 0 0.020, sorry, is less than your alpha, you are going to reject the null hypothesis. And rejection of that null hypothesis is what counts as statistically significant, quote unquote. Actually, I'll move it up just a little bit to make it a little bit clearer. So rejection of the null is what is statistically significant. So it, are our results statistically significant? Yes, they are, again, because that p-value is less than alpha. And that's always what you're looking for with the p-value method. You're always looking to see if your p-value is low. If it is less than alpha, you will reject. All right, then what conclusion would you reach? Well, if you reject the null hypothesis, then you're going to say there is sufficient evidence to support the claim that. So that's all the setup for this. And then you're going to write what the claim was. The average age for the onset of anorexia in women is less than 15 years old. Remember, we saw that setup in section 10.1. So I'll just put that right here. I just flip back to the notes real quick in 10.1 so you can see it. If when you reject H0, the conclusion you draw is there is sufficient evidence to support the claim and then write out what your claim was in English. All right, I'll go back to those other notes now. All right, so now we need to remember what it means to make a type 1 error in this situation. So also remember from section 10.1, it's been a while, that type 1 error means you rejected the null hypothesis, but the null hypothesis was actually true was actually true. Like you are somehow at magically able to know that it's really true um, in real life, like as we look at it, right? Of course, in a real problem, we don't ever really know if any things are true or not, but we're pretending we somehow know. All right, so if that's the case, then we rejected that H0. So we rejected H0, if you recall, was that the average age for the onset of anorexia is 15. So we said, oh, no, 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 I reject that. So you rejected that the average age for the onset of anorexia nervosa in women is 15, but it is actually 15. So you said it wasn't 15 anymore, but it actually still is. All right, we're all done with that example. I'll see you back here for the next one in the next video.